Hi, I am on my lunch break. And, and here, I have eggs, onions, peppers, and meatballs. I know it's a very weird combination, but these past few years, or maybe the past year, I've been eating a lot of concoction recipes where I just pick random things that I like to eat and I just mix them in a pot. And then I stir fry it and then I eat it. I mean, it's not like they come out gross or anything because I don't really add anything unique. It's always just oil and salt. So yesterday I was doing some research on GoPros and they actually just they actually just released their 7 series. I actually had no idea that they were releasing their next series. So I guess it was a pleasant surprise to see them basically announce it. I think that they are shipping out early October, so you can pre-order them right now. So originally when I was thinking of getting a GoPro, I didn't want to go too hard on my purchase. So when I last looked at them, it seems like their best model was 4K 60 frames per second. And currently, oh, camera's right there. The camera I'm using right now, the Sony one, is 4K 30 FPS. So even if I got 60 FPS, I don't feel like I could really fully utilize it. I mean, it depends. If I choose to include riding clips with my vlogs, then I won't be able to use the 60. But if I just make them stand alone, then it's fine. So I guess it's not a huge deal, but I didn't want to necessarily spend the extra $100 to get 60 frames per second because usually it seemed like their model was 1080p would be $200, 4K 30fps would be $300, and then 4K, sorry, 60fps would be $400. So with their most recent one, I was really wanting to just get 4K 30 FPS, which would put it at $300. But when I was looking at their page for the black, which is their most expensive model, the $400 one, they have this new feature called Hyper Smooth or something. So basically it really stabilizes the motion. And that was always something that drove me crazy. It's something that drives me crazy about this camera now actually, where Anytime you move with it, it is so blurry because it's 30 frames per second. So anytime I would try to do moving shots, I would move really fucking slow. And sometimes, even when you think you're moving slow, it's not slow enough for this camera. So that stuff was so annoying. Any walking shots, it just, it's so shaky. So when I was looking at this one clip that they have on their website, it's like dirt bike riding and they have a side-by-side -side comparison and it looks so good. So then when I saw that, I was like, oh man, if I get a GoPro, I have to have that feature. Because another aspect of having a GoPro that I was really excited about was putting my speed as an overlay if I do choose to take riding shots. And at first, I didn't know that GoPros have the capability to do that in the camera. I thought that I would have to do some fancy shit and try to like do it externally, but they have GPS capabilities, so all of that is included and that's something I'm really excited for. I really didn't want to spend $400 on a GoPro. Uh, this is still something I'm trying to delay a little bit because $400 is a lot for me to just drop. <laughs> In the past, 400 to me, I would just drop a month, but I'm trying to be more responsible now. So this is a really cool thing to buy, I think. I would really enjoy having it because similar to this camera, actually, when I was first thinking of buying a camera, I was like, oh my goodness, $1,000 is so much to spend. And to be honest, I put this camera on my 0% card, so I technically didn't really pay a thousand dollars all at once for this because it's on my card and I really haven't paid it yet. So the thing is that I'm trying to say is that this camera, even though I was very hesitant to buy it because of the price and because I didn't know how much use I would get out of it because I had never gotten a DSLR camera before and I also didn't know, you know, how much I would actually end up using it, how much I would enjoy using it 
because I was never a photography person. I never recorded videos of myself before ever. So when I bought it, I was like, uh, kind of worried and sure about what it would be like. But now, how long has it been? I think it's been nearly a year since I've had this camera. Not quite a year yet, but I do feel very happy having it now. And I'm always really glad to use it to record and stuff because I'm generally like really pleased with it. And I like how I'm able to record in 4K because whenever I watch videos in 1080p, I'm like, holy shit, so blurry. Like it's very noticeable for certain things, like especially still shots, you can, it's just so crisp, 4K is so crisp. So I wanted 4K and this camera makes me very happy. So. For my GoPro, I just feel like a GoPro would just be very fun to use. I would love to record riding so I can share them. And then another random thing I could do is I could put it on Riley while we're hiking so people can see her point of view while she's sniffing ground and stuff. So even though 400 sounds like a lot to spend right now, I think if I did buy it, I would enjoy using it. So it wouldn't be a complete waste. It would just be so fun to have and actually I feel like it would be nice if I brought it to Utah too to put it on her but that's a bit too soon maybe that's like in a month so that's probably too soon to buy this but I kind of got excited when I was looking it up yesterday because I didn't realize it had all these features that I wanted okay finally heading back to work <laughs> this was one of my longer lunches sort of but I don't think people really mind. I feel like it's been over a month or something, but my parents went to Vegas recently to look at houses. My dad seems very positive that he wants to buy a house in Vegas. So there are new houses being built in this one neighborhood that he went to see. And he says that they will be available to purchase on November and then he will probably end up closing sometime next year so if he does go through with it I was thinking that instead of flying to New Jersey back home to see them I could just drive to Vegas when they close and then go spend some time with them there I just feel like that would be so much more convenient and it's not that I don't want to go home it's just that there are a few factors that I guess I was thinking a lot about like I would probably want to rent a car while I'm in Jersey because there's really not much I can do at home, especially if I don't have my computer and they have very poor options for watching any form of TV. So I would be so bored out of my mind. I would need to drive around and maybe go hiking with Riley. So I wouldn't want to take their car because my parents both have BMWs because my dad loves BMW and they are sedans, so I would just not feel great about putting Riley in the crate in their cars. I'm sure they wouldn't feel happy about that either, so I just don't want to do that. And I would most likely have to rent a car. So there's aspects like that. And then, yeah, I just wouldn't know what I can do at home. Um, I guess that's how a lot of people feel maybe when they go home. You just don't have a lot of options. To entertain yourself there's only so much you can do spending time with your family and they would have to go to work if I stay longer than a weekend so <clears throat> if I drove to Vegas I feel like I would probably just choose to still get an Airbnb maybe and then kind of hang around the area explore <laughs> I'm a big fan of exploring nowadays but I guess that is definitely an exciting aspect, having them closer to here. Um, my dad actually sent me the floor plans of the house model that he is looking at. And it's about, I think it said it was around 2,500 square feet. And then the lot size was 3,900 square feet. So when I was looking at it, I was feeling a little bit sad, I guess, because I like our home a lot. I actually really like our house. I like how much land they have. When I was looking it up at work, apparently our house is 0.34 acres, which is a good amount of land. And they have a nice yard. My mom likes to plant things. 
So I was thinking when I was looking at the house was that it has such a tiny yard. I don't even, I wouldn't even consider it a yard because it's basically like a small patio area, enough for some seating and then something else on the side, but that's it. And then it's really dry in Vegas. So I don't really know if my mom will be able to plant anything. So my dad was saying that they don't mind the small lot size, but I guess I kind of feel like they are downgrading. It feels crappy to say that, maybe just because of the term, but I guess to me it just feels weird to go from more land to less land, but my dad was saying it would be their retirement home, so they don't need anything amazing. They've always been extremely frugal people. They don't really have super fancy stuff. They are generally home a lot, so I guess whatever makes them happy. So right now my adorable puppers is getting a much needed rest. I came home and tired her out immediately. <laughs> Man, sometimes when I say that it sounds a little uh, naughty. I have not been the greatest lately and sometimes I obsess over how tight her e-collar is a little bit too much. So the issue with that is if I have it on too loose, it's actually not good because then it's moving around too much and I think it irritates her skin so much more. So I think yesterday I probably had it on too loose and it kind of created a little bit of a sore on her skin. So when I saw that at night, I was like, oh God, I'm so bad. So today I wanted to give her a break from wearing it which normally it does give me a lot of anxiety just because I'm like, oh God, if she doesn't have it on, maybe she'll be naughty. But honestly, she kind of generally behaves the exact same way, which is really incredible. So I don't really think I have anything to worry about, honestly. And I was also really awful too, because this morning I decided to try to shave her opposite side so she could just wear the e-collar on the opposite side but I fucking, I used a little bit too much force maybe, or I probably angled the shaver a little bit too direct, if that makes any sense. So at first it looked like it was fine, but then it got a little red. So I was like, God, fuck. Okay, I figured it's probably, <laughs> sometimes if I just point the camera at one thing for too long and I'm just talking and like, it's just one object, even though it's Riley and she's a real thing, she's just laying there, right? So I was like, um, maybe I should just talk to the camera so people don't feel like, why am I listening to her talk while we're staring at her dog? But, ah, okay, so I do this thing where I shave my legs with a dull razor and it is extremely dull. Like I use the same razor for six plus months Sometimes I don't even keep track how long I go before I change it out, but I must have like iron skin or something because I rarely, if ever, cut myself to the point where I don't even worry about cutting myself. I don't know, maybe it's amazing that I haven't cut myself yet because I don't use anything. I don't use any shaving cream, just bare skin with this dull ass razor. So I think after doing that for so long, I, I, I probably forget that it's possible to cut yourself with stuff like this. So I, I just feel like I did it so much in the past that whenever I do shave her, even though it takes like less than five seconds, I don't put too much thought into it. So maybe this morning it was slightly different where the other side is like fully grown, right? So I pretty much had to shave a good layer off, but the shaver takes it off really easily. So I probably just, fucked up and I felt really bad about it. I mean, she doesn't show any visible discomfort or pain or anything whatsoever, but like just seeing it and just seeing it not look very good makes me feel bad. I'm pretty sure it will heal within a day or two, but she wouldn't really be wearing the e-collar for that long during the weekday, I guess like six to seven hours total during the day. But since it's just the evening time and she's she honestly follows through on everything without even needing the e-collar half the time. So yeah, just wanted to give her a little break from it and let her little neck area heal up a little bit. 
There have been so many posts of new cards for Artifact lately, and I feel like there's so much hype and build up over this game too, that I don't really know what to expect. I don't really like to listen to what the masses are saying. It's kind of similar to WoW where people would often say what class is good, what class sucks, what class are they re-rolling to because of what people are saying. And I don't like listening to any of that because I like to just experience things for myself and then I'll judge instead of listening to what people are gossiping about, you know? So this feels similar for Artifact where you read so much build up. Like there's a lot of talk lately where very popular Hearthstone streamers are tweeting that this is the best card game they've ever played or that they're absolutely switching over from Hearthstone to Artifact and I mean that's really good. It's nice to hear positive reception before the game is even available to most of the public for beta but I feel like it also kind of builds up this expectation for me although at the same time I actually feel pretty confident about the game just because based on the gameplay that I've seen and the cards I just recognize that the game is way more complex than Hearthstone and that already makes me expect really good things. So I, God, like honestly, I have been thinking about Artifact every single day. Every morning I check Twitter to see if there's any new news for Artifact and they do release several cards every day but for some reason I don't have that much interest in just like obsessing over new cars, reading what they do and all of that. I feel like I would rather see all of them once the game is available, at least beta for me to play. That way I can take them all in at once instead of one by one. Ah, uh, you know, I, I honestly am a little surprised because I have never anticipated a game like this for quite a while now. These past few years, I don't think I would say that I've anticipated a game like this. Wow, expansions, definitely I have not anticipated like this. I feel like those games were kind of just like, okay, I'll play it, but nothing as eager as like reading stuff on it daily and just really hoping <laughs> that they release the beta in early October. Ah, something I was actually thinking about trying because when I watched the IGN gameplay for 4K for Artifact, I was like, damn, this game looks so beautiful. And it kind of made me want to record it in 4K as well. And the only way I can do that is with my TV, which might not be the worst idea because a card game is not super interactive. It basically only requires a mouse. I actually wonder if there might be key bindings for the game that can make your gameplay a little bit more smooth, but from what I can understand, it's just gonna be click and drag. So if that's true, then playing on a TV won't even be that bad. The only thing is that I will have to kind of change up my setup every time I play where I need to disable my two monitors if I ever want to record in 4K because I just tend to have issues getting games to stay on my TV in full screen mode if these two monitors are enabled. So. I guess in order to do that very easily, I need to disable these two monitors. And usually doing that is kind of annoying because you have to do them individually, disable this one first, then disable the other one. And if I have to do that every single time I wanna play the game, it could be annoying. But maybe there's um, something I can download where I can have profiles for what display setup I want. Because in the past when I had something that I really preferred, I actually found a really useful software that did that. So something that I use right now is a speaker default device changer, if that makes any sense. Basically, I press a hotkey and it just changes which default um, output I'm using. In the past, I would switch between TV, my speakers for my computer, and then my headset. So right now I only have TV and speakers connected, so I would just press it and then it would switch. That's the sound that it makes where it will tell you which device is currently selected. So instead of having to right click your speaker icon in your toolbar and then click change default, I can just do it in a keybind. It's so easy and it's so convenient. I love it. So 
if I have something for a display also, that would work really well. <sighs> but yeah, I'm trying not to think about it too much because I hate anticipating something so much where it just starts to bother me. <laughs> This is a feeling that's comparable to long distance relationships where even though you really enjoy someone's company, sometimes you feel very bitter about it because you're like, man, I really want to spend time with this person in person, but I can't. So it kind of makes you feel a little unhappy about it. So that's kind of similar. <laughs> can't overthink it. But today, tonight, the first movie, I don't know if I'm watching two tonight. I have been on a roll where I'm watching two movies a day, but the first one I'm watching is Upgrade. I actually know very little about this movie, but fantasy, thriller, sci-fi, combination of those. We'll see if it's interesting. I feel like I haven't seen a fantasy movie quite a bit. I've been watching a lot of dramas lately. So fantasy that turns out to be good. It's like a near future kind of thing. Hopefully that turns out good. And I can't believe it's only Tuesday. I actually went into work this morning thinking it was Wednesday, but the weekend will be here soon enough. 